today we have Bill Oldham with us from Community Education, and he's going to read a book to us. What are you going to read? Well, hi, Claire. I'm going to read Violet the Pilot. Ooh, Violet the Pilot. Uh-huh. Uh, her inventions will take her sky high. I thought you might like to hear a story about a, a little girl that invents things and does things with science. Oh, yeah. I love science. Good. Okay, Violet the Pilot by Steve Breen. Oh, first of all, you can't really read it, but there's lots of cool pictures wow. in your drawings about her invention. It is cool. I know. Okay. Everyone in town knew that Violet Van Winkle was a little different. For starters, she and her parents lived in an odd-looking house next to the junkyard her father managed. And while other girls were playing with dolls and tea sets, Violet played with monkey wrenches and needle nose pliers. The older she got, the more interesting Violet's creations became. Around the time she turned eight, she was building elaborate machines from scratch. And not just any old machines, Flying machines. Wow, that looks like fun. It does, doesn't it? Her parents couldn't believe their eyes when they saw Violet zoom by for the first time. They were a little worried in the beginning, but they quickly saw that she was a pretty good pilot. Careful not to hit the house, Violet's father would yell. <laughs> and put on a sweater, her mother would add. Sounds like something a mother would say, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. Violet used anything she could find in the junkyard to make her wonderful contraptions. There was the tub bubbler. <laughs> That's funny. It is. And the bicycle copter. And the rocket can. Oh, that looks scary. Oh, here's a couple more. The pogo plane, the slide glider. Oh, now that one looks like fun. I like saying that one too. The slide, slide glider. Slide glider. And the wing of a jig, just to name a few. Pilot engineering was pretty sound. The only real hazards were tall trees, piles of junk in the yard. And bugs in her teeth. Oh, oh, yeah, she's got bugs in her teeth. Kids at school would see Violet eating lunch alone and make fun of her strange books and greasy coveralls. Claude and Clyde Marooney were especially obnoxious. That's not very nice. No, that's not very nice. You know, just because someone's different or eating by themselves, you shouldn't make fun of them. <music> then, one day, Violet noticed a picture, a poster, in the drugstore window. Air show, October 20th, it read. Well, that's only two weeks away, Violet thought. Can kids fly in the show? Is homemade aircraft allowed? That night, Violet sat in her room thinking about the air show. She knew it would be a good feeling if one of her planes won a prize. And maybe then the kids at school would be nice to her. Violet pictured exactly where she would hang her blue ribbon. She and Orville spent the next few days combing the junkyard for just the right materials. When they had collected a giant pile of stuff, the building began. One day, the Mulrooney twins stopped, happened to pass by. Look, it's that girl from school, one of them said. What are you doing here, weirdo? <laughs> I'm building an airplane, she told them. The twins exploded in laughter, then mumbled something mean as they walked away. Orville barked at the boys, but Violet just went back to her project. Take it easy, buddy. She said, we're too busy to worry about them. Mm -hmm. That's the best thing to do when someone's being ugly. Oh, yeah. Finally, after days.
days of hard work, Violet had finished making her flying machine. She named the mag magnificent new craft the Hornet. <laughs> Wait till the people in the grandstand see me flying this, Violet said to Orville. There's Orville taking a picture <laughs> of her. That's pretty funny. Yeah. Look at this. The test flight was a success. She did a loop and Orville fell out <gasps> and got back in. Oh, 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 she caught him. She did. Yeah. On the day of the big air show, Violet took off, bursting with excitement. Her parents' faces had beamed with pride when they wished her luck, and she, and she thought about that as she flew through the clear autumn sky. She calculated that the trip would take about 20 minutes. She would arrive just in time for the start of the show. Suddenly, something caught Violet's eyes. In the river below, a group of people were waving frantically. Violet lowered her altitude to get a better look. A troop of Boy Scouts had run into trouble while canoeing. Violet knew she had to help, and fast. Oh, yeah. It wasn't easy rescuing all the boys, but Violet piloted the Hornet with careful precision. And she's picking them out of the river. Whoa. Saving the Scoutmaster from going over the falls was particularly dangerous. Wow. Her plane is full. Cool. It's full. And then Violet dropped the Grateful Scouts off at the hospital. Then she checked her watch. 3.30, she said to Orville, sadly, we've missed the air show. She turned her plane towards home and sighed. It was a miserable feeling. Aww. That evening, Violet had no appetite for dinner. She just went upstairs and sat on her bed. All of a sudden, she heard lots of noise outside the house. She and Orville went to the window and discovered that a crowd of people had gathered. Someone spotted her. There's Violet, the boy shouted jubilantly. That's our, there's our hero. They were calling her a hero. Wow. Van Winkle stepped outside, squinting from all the flash bulbs that were popping. The press... The mayor, the fire and police chiefs, even kids and teachers from school had all learned of the rescue that day and had come to praise her. Young lady, please accept this medal of valor, valor as a token of our gratitude and esteem, said the mayor. And he gave Orville a new collar with a license that read K-9 Hero. <laughs> From that day on, Violet's parents let her fly whenever she wanted, but her mom still made her wear a sweater. <laughs> the end. That was pretty good. <laughs> that was good. You know, we should not be afraid to be who we are because, you know, a lot of times people who are into like science, because mm -hmm. a lot of that was science. You know, they may be looked at like they're a little bit different, but you know what? They're the ones who are making big changes in this world. And, well, and like, she saved some people. She did. Yeah, that's right. And she's a girl and did all that building and things. It doesn't have to be just for boys. I had two girls when I, they were little like you, and I used to like to read them books like this. And I want, want my girls to know what I want you to know, and that's that girls can do anything. You got that right. Us girls can do anything we put our minds to. That's right. Well, thank you so much for reading the book to me. And uh, 